how to use a script to convert uh, model output from uh, Ocean FVCOM Ocean model to NOAA GNOMES uh, format NetCDF files so that you can use the GNOME particle tracking software to see where the modeled currents would uh, carry particles that were uh, contained in the moving around with the flow. This can be really useful for just for visualization or for understanding where things might go if they're released in different locations at different times. So the first thing to do is to create this file is to go to this IPython notebook, which is this URL here, https geoport.hui.edu 8456, and you'll get challenged with a password. And then you get in there and you can look for this, um, this workbook called Mass Bay to GNOME here. And then when you open this up, you'll see a page that looks like this. And all you have to do um, to change the, this is set up for the Mass Bay grid of the FECOM, um, for the FECOM Nikovs model. And um, that is, sorry about this, uh, <laughs> sorry about that automated thing jumping in there. Um, but the, then you, um, you just, this is all set up to point to the right data set. Um, you could point to an, another, we could set this up to look at a different um, FVCOM grid if we wanted to. Uh, but anyway, um, the only thing you really have to do here is change the, this This is showing you the date range here for the date. It starts in, um, in 2011 in January, uh, January 18th, and it ends, this particular archive ends uh, December 31st. We could probably request SMAS to increase this archive if we needed to. Um, but anyway, so here, here's what you do. You modify these, these values here. So this is um, year, month, day of the start and year, month, day of end, um, hours, minutes, seconds. That's all you have to do actually to uh, create a, a different input file. And um, each week is it generates a file that's about 220 megabytes. So you probably don't want to really go much more. I mean, you could if you you could do two weeks and you'd get a 400 megabyte file um, for download and then for use, and that's okay. Uh, just be aware of you know that's what you're doing. So you could modify these times to pull different uh, periods in July or August or whatever. Okay. So here I was just looking at what variables were available in this data set. Um, and looking at a particular variable name UA, which is the vertical average velocity in this case, you can so you can specify uh, here U and V are the three-dimensional velocity fields, and UA and UV, yeah, sorry, UA and VA are the depth average velocities. You can specify either one. If you specify the 3D velocities U and V, that you're going to get back the surface layer. And here I'm picking UA and UV, which UA and VA, which are the depth average velocities. Um, and so if you actually wanted to change uh, the mapping, if you wanted to change what is it to the surface layer of the 3D velocity field, you would change this to U and V here. But assuming you just want to go with the depth average velocities, you leave that UA and UV and just run this thing. Okay. So um, when you run this thing, it down, it, oh, and the way you run it, of course, is to go, um, you just go up here, you go cell, run all, and it goes through and runs this whole thing um, and you can see what, how it's doing here by all the different steps and when you see this asterisk that means you know, it's running extracting data and um, rather than let this finish i'll just um, or at the end here it'll say it'll print out writing the gnome file it writes out this file and that file then becomes available through this link that i've got here at the top okay so you can once this thing is completed once you see the numbers you don't see any more asterisks over here then you go and you click this and download the file. So I've already done that. So I'm just going to go fire up GNOME. Um, and uh, if you don't have this, there's a link at the top of that page to show you where to get it. But when you bring in, you start up GNOME, you get this uh, little interface that looks like this. Let me just move it onto the screen here so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, and um, you'll see this thing called Universal Movers. If you double click that, you'll get a little um, box here that asks you to load. Um, and then you can just point to the file that you downloaded. And it says you want to reset the model start time to the first time in the file. We say yes. And that will automatically set the, um, 
the spill, the start of the spill time to match the start of the current data that you've downloaded. So in this case, I downloaded some data in July. Um, I think it started at July 11th or something like that. And that will be the time that the, the spill starts. Uh, you might have to change, uh, the first time you run GNOME, you might have to change it into uh, diagnostic mode using the preferences up here at the top. Uh, or advanced mode or something like that to allow you to get access to that thing that loads the currents. And when you see this, you know, not responding like this, um, you might get worried, but um, it just takes a while to load those big data files. So, um, and once, once that file gets loaded, then that will have um, the ability to, to, um, to do the spill tracking. Um, I'm gonna pause it here just for a second. Okay, so that, that actually took a couple of minutes on my computer. It'll vary with how fast your computer is. But when it finally loads, you'll get a box that looks like this. Um, you have to enter in some uncertainty. Um, I actually have to figure out what these numbers mean. But uh, <laughs> I've just been entering in something that's um, uh, sort of the length of the spill and like 10% uncertainty. Um, and then you... Uh, Click this OK box here, and um, and then you get you you get your uh, it should pop up a picture of your grid, and you can click on the little plus box there and kind of zoom into some area you're more interested in, and you can use this little uh, tool to uh, move around and uh, pan around. And so now um, you want to set the your your spill actually. But before you do that, you can see up here in model settings, the duration of your spill is, is only set for a default of 24 hours. That's just it. So you probably want to click that and change that to, uh, in this case, we had uh, six days and 23 hours, I guess, for the uh, for the output period that we selected. So it's, and you can see here, it's starting on July 10th. Oh, we can click this here, include the minimum regret uncertainty, which means it's going to put a little random walk on top um, we probably want that, and we can turn on the show currents to get some idea of the currents. It's a computational time step. You can increase that to get a uh, not quite as good resolution of tracking, but to make it run faster. Um, but if you want accuracy, you should keep that make keep that small or make it even smaller and see if there's any uh, difference in your solution. So once we've done that, we can say OK, and now we're ready to create a spill. Um, you can use this little line tool. Here, the ship, um, but I'm going to use this little spray can. So I'm going to click on the spray can, and you have to give the spill a name. Let's call it uh, Turo. Um, just click OK, um, and spray can setting. We'll just leave that at medium. And now you can go in and just, if you hold down the mouse key and um, and move your mouse around, you can create a little spill, um, just a bunch of particles essentially. And then it says up here. Select the arrow tool to leave the leave edit mode. So I'm going to click that, and now I'm ready to uh, to go ahead and do the spill. So you can go ahead and uh, which is just really particle tracking. So I can click this little uh, the uh, the VCR control here to watch the spill start moving, um, and the time uh, is going along up here. So you can see the tides moving this little patch around. The black dots, again, are the actual particles, and the red dots are a little bit of random walk on top. So here you can see some particles going around the tip of the cape, um, back and forth with the ties, and another little cluster here inside the cape moving along kind of in shallow water. So this is, again, moving with the depth average currents. You can do this again. You can set make another spill if you want, and um, or you can, uh, you can go back and, and, and modify that uh, particular spill that's shown here. So... If you double click on that, you know, you can change the characteristics of that particular one, or you could enter in another uh, spill. Like if we wanted to do like a line like this, we can just do um, patch two or something. So now we have a line and a little blob there, and we can watch, see what happens to those. So you can play a lot of games here. You can actually do a continuous um, release if you want to, just instead of just releasing at a particular time. Um, and to do that, you can you can go and um, and create a uh, a new spill. Say either way again, but we could do it with uh, uh, we could do it with this guy again. You can go in here and um, just click a point, say, and then you can change the release time 
uh, or you can say a different release test. So let's say spill three, um, or maybe patch three, and you can say different release time down here and say um, it's like six, you know, uh, six days later. Say, okay. So now this guy will be a continuous release. You can see the difference here. It's continually the stuff coming out of this spot here. So this gives you um, a lot of flexibility in looking at how the particles would move in the flow uh, that you input. And that's about it.